I've always believed that chess at heart is a logical game. And by playing principled plans and logical moves with good planning, you can easily take down some very strong players. In this game, my opponent is the Singaporean IM Liu Xiang Yi, and as we'll see, I managed to beat him by playing very simple moves with nothing special at all. My opponent opened with e4, and I responded with the Petrov. It's a very solid line. Knight takes e4, bishop d3, now d5. Here, the main move is knight takes e5. And there's a lot of theory in these lines. But instead, my opponent went for the move d takes e5, which is actually very popular online. Now here, white has some ideas. For instance, if we were to play some random move, then actually he could take on e4, take on d8, and play knight g5. And there could be some issues. So probably it's not the best idea to let white take on e4, and that's why I played the move knight c5. No reason to let him change the pawn structure in his favor. We have a very healthy center, and now we just continue to develop. Bishop e2, bishop e7, castles, castles. Knight c3 attacking the pawn on d5, but we easily defend it. Now here white plays h3. He doesn't want us to play bishop g4 and exchange up this bishop. Now we have a very solid center, obviously, but it's not at all easy to complete our queenside development. As if we play the move bishop f5, then now white has to move knight d4, hitting our bishop on f5. And if bishop g6, then now f4, with the plan f5, is quite menacing. And we can see the white central pawns are really starting to play a huge role here. So instead, I went for a very typical idea in these type of positions. f6, removing the cramping e5 pawn. And if we can do so, it would be much harder for white to make use of his king side majority. So white plays bishop f4. He's not going to take on f6, but instead, he'd like us to take on e5 so he can perhaps bring his bishop to an active square. So we simply play knight bd7, a very simple and strong move. Now the knight on b8 is often a problem piece, because as we can see, in this position, the knight doesn't really have any good squares to develop to. And that's why we're trying to trade it off for one of white's good pieces here. White plays queen d2, now we take on e5. Again, we are very happy to trade off a pair of knights, especially this is our bad knight, and now white takes back on e5. Now it's possible and actually pretty good for us to develop our bishop with bishop f5. But I also want to trade off white's active bishop on e5, as mentioned before. So the move bishop f6 also makes a lot of sense. Now here white plays the move bishop d4, and I can get what he's trying to do. So he's trying to get this knight to block my bishop, for instance after knight e6, but what he actually missed is that after bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, the knight is rerouting itself to a very very powerful square. And after rook a e1, now we play the move knight f4. And we can see that this knight on f4 is really close to white king, and he's really gonna start to come up with some very serious threats very soon. So white played bishop g4, but I think this was a mistake because now there's a very simple and strong move with queen g5. So obviously there are some tactical issues. For instance, if we make some random move for white, then whoops, knight takes h3 and the queen on d2 is lost. So after queen g5, white plays queen e3. So the white queen is now defended and these discovered checks don't work anymore. But there is still another issue and that's that two of black's pieces are pointing towards the pawn on g2 and seeing that, I played the move h5, simple and strong. This bishop obstructs our path to g2, so all we need to do is to trade it off, or to force it to move out of the way. So we can see there are some very serious issues. For instance, if white plays bishop f3, trying to use this bishop to defend g2, then bishop takes h3, and we are living the dream here. We're taking our bishop, developing it, and winning a key pawn, and crashing through. Yes, I said the word and so many times, but that just shows how much this move does. So instead after h5, white went full desperado and played the move g3. So obviously, let's be honest, this cannot work. White is trying to get some counterplay on the king side by opening up his king. Yeah, that's not gonna work. h takes g4, now he takes my knight, and simply rook takes f4. So now we're a pawn up with a continuing attack. The game is over. Or is it? Well, firstly, the move queen e8 check never works because I simply block with the rook and next move, g takes h3 is gonna win another important pawn and even if you trade the queens, it's really not gonna help because these end games with two pawns up are just too much to handle. But going back to the starting position, white actually has a very strong move in the move h4. Now this move doesn't actually save the game but it gives white the best chance to actually hope for something. For instance, if we were to drop the queen back to h6, which is probably 
play best. White can now play the move knight e2. And after rook e4, yes, white's going to be a pawn down in this end game. Yes, white is going to be suffering. But at least the game is not over yet. But after rook takes f4, my opponent was really low on time. As you can imagine, this is a blitz game and his position sucks, which makes it extra hard. And he plays king h2, but now we simply take on h3 and it's not much else to say. Mate is threatened, so rook g1 is forced, but simply queen f6, increasing the pressure on the pawn on f2. Again, queen e8 check is met by queen f8, and these endgames two pawns up, which is never possible to hold. So after queen f6, white played rook e2, defending the pawn on f2. Perhaps this was the worst possible option, because now we develop with tempo. Simply bishop g4, rook d2. Now everything is winning, but why not bring our last piece into the game with rook f8. White steps out of the check with king h1, but it doesn't help, because now we get another check with bishop f3. And after king h2, bishop g2, the white king is desperate short of squares. Knight d1 and now rook f3 is the killing move. Because no matter where the queen goes, there's going to be a check and checkmate. For instance, if white plays queen d4, then simply queen d6 check and next move it's going to be checkmate. Or if white tries queen c5 to stop queen d6, then the queen checks from another square and it's also mate. So in the game, white played rook takes g2, but before waiting for the move rook takes e3, winning a whole queen, white decided that there was no point to play on, and rightly so, and so he decided to resign. A very simple, very instructive game in my opinion, in terms of showing how powerful simple chess can be. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more of this, then make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.